a limited period, a short period. And uh, uh, if you come late, you might not uh, get the benefits. It's, it is like first, first come, first serve basis. So I would request you to uh, take advantage of the scheme. Uh, why this scheme has been um, brought, let me just uh, take you through that. Um, the main, uh, main, uh, main, main intention for bringing out this scheme is to uh, is to reimburse the cost that we take uh, for digitization, and it is also for incentivizing uh, providing digital health services to all the patients. So, um, we, as you all know, that EVDM is patient centric. It would make available all the records, uh, all the health records of a patient with herself. Uh, and and with her control. So in order to provide citizen centric services, we had launched AVDM and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you, uh, the facilities, the digital solution companies would uh, be providing those facilities and that is why we wanted to incentivize, we want to encourage all of you to come forward. We know that uh, digitization is not, uh, it, it, it is not a simple process. It is costly, it takes money, it takes effort. So, so we want to uh, maybe reimburse uh, you uh, uh, and similar schemes have uh, have uh, been uh, rolled out by the government in the UPI uh, for uh, uh, for uh, for say uh, TB patients identification for Janani Suraksha Yojana. So they at various times these incentive schemes have been brought up by the government to uh, promote adoption. So that's why this scheme is also. Um, uh, uh, is also in that line. Uh, to whom is the scheme applicable for? And uh, we will come to all the questions, Ashish and all. Uh, we will come to all the questions in the end. You can put those questions in the chat box and then uh, we'll take them one by one. Uh, who are the eligible entities for this uh, scheme? So first of all, for all the hospitals who are there, uh, for the uh, for all the hospitals who have ten or more beds are uh, are eligible for this uh, uh, incentive scheme. Um, um, we, as you all know, NHA is building up the health facility registry. Uh, in the health facility registry, you have to declare the number of beds. So as far as we would use that data for uh, um, for checking if you are eligible for all laboratories, radiology centers, this is applicable. And this is also applicable for uh, entities who are uh, providing AVDM enabled solution. Um, presently, we have about 78 uh, entities, and that number is increasing day by day. So, all those entities, uh, we, all those software providers, we want to incentivize and we want to encourage. Uh, it would be, uh, uh, it is also uh, uh, the main point of the scheme is that uh, we want. Uh, uh, you all, the, all the facilities, all the uh, laboratories to do a minimum level of transactions. It is not that you do one transaction and then you go uh, go and uh, that's it. We want you to keep using it. We have defined some base level transactions that you have done, but as you would see that the base, transact, the base level is also uh, not uh, a very huge, uh, um, uh, not a very huge number. And most of you, if you want to do to avail this incentive, will be able to avail. Uh, for facilities which have 10 beds or less, uh, often a question is asked that, uh, what about those facilities? And, um, and we would come to that in a bit. And it's also mentioned in the scheme document that we would, uh, uh, we would uh, provide incentives to the digital solution companies and they might provide incentives to such facilities. But this is between you and the, between such facilities and the digital solution company. Presently, we are focused on uh, those health facilities who provide 10 or more beds. And for uh, uh, facilities having less than 10 beds, their incentives would be provided to the uh, EVDM enabled digital solution company. I was talking uh, about base level criteria and the base level criteria um, uh, basically means that this is the minimum number of transactions you have to do. Uh, we, would, uh, we have also defined transactions in our uh, scheme document, but uh, just to reiterate that transaction for us means any AVDM uh, or ABHA enabled health record. And uh, 
you would also have UHI related transactions in that. And, uh, and for an hospital, what we have done is we have defined the base level uh, to be uh, per bed so that all the small hospitals, the medium hospitals, and the large hospitals, they are all also not, uh, uh, all of them are on the same page. A large hospital, if the, if the base level is only uh, 500 for, for a large hospital to do 500 transactions is pretty much easy, but not for a small hospital. So we have devised, uh, we have devised it as per bed, but it means OPD, IPD, all transactions. It doesn't, a bed doesn't mean that those, those health records that you have to give to uh, the patient is only from the IPD facility, it's from all the facilities, all the facilities that you have in your um, facility. Yeah, and uh, for laboratories, uh, we don't have any per bed criteria. We have defined a uniform 500 transactions per month. And we believe that uh, this, this can be achieved by most of the laboratories. Uh, there are, uh, as I mentioned, we are also providing incentives to digital solution companies. And uh, the incentives to them is that suppose there is there is 100 rupees, uh, which is an incentive to the hospital or to the diagnostic lab on the left. The purchase, uh, the, the twenty-five percent of that amount will be provided to the uh, to the uh, to the digital solution company. In addition, we know that there might be uh, various hospitals, clinic, uh, nursing homes, uh, which do not have, uh, which are not, uh, which do not have more than ten beds, which are in the eligible category. For those for those facilities, we would provide uh, we would provide incentives to the digital solution company. And the quantum of that uh, of those uh, incentives would be five rupees. Um, we have also uh, 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 prepared a rough uh, uh, rough incentive calculator so that if you are an hospital or a lab or a digital solution company, you can put in what your transactions are and you can see what uh, your incentives will be. We want to keep it. We have, we have tried to keep it very simple, uh, and uh, uh, we have thought that. Uh, it should be very easy to understand. Having said that, if there are any queries, we are always there. We have uh, set up an email ID, uh, uh, abdm.incentive, which is there on uh, the last slide, and uh, we will share it with you. We have also set up a website, um, uh, which, uh, which, we are, which is there, abdm.gov.in slash dhis. It is also on one of the slides, and where we would like to provide all relevant information pertaining to uh, this scheme. Uh, what are the salient features? Just to reiterate, the digital solution companies will be provided an incentive of 25% of what the incentive that is provided to hospital. Uh, it would be over and above. For example, if 100 rupees is provided to the hospital, uh, 25 rupees would be provided to the digital, uh, digital uh, solution company. Um, we have also said that for as hospitals who have uh, who have 10 beds or less, their incentives would be provided to the digital solution company and uh, we would uh, expect that the digital solution company passes on some incentives to you or we provide uh, 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 low cost solutions so that more and more people can buy them. Uh, you would also know about the fact that NHC has also collaborated with uh, the Quality Council of India and the NADH to certify digital software. Uh, similar to the way in which we uh, uh, we have the uh, star ratings of the air conditioners and it help us to make a decision, we thought that it will be a good idea if we could go and rate the software by QCI where they would uh, provide ratings to it. So for those software who have been rated by the QCI and who have been cheered by QCI, they will be provided 20% more incentives. So all the digital solution companies, we would request you to uh, kindly get your software uh, uh, certified by QCI, and mm -hmm. if there are any problems, yeah, and if there are any problems, we'll be there to support. And also, we will. I mean, NHC is bearing the cost of your certification. You don't have to do anything. You just have to provide demos to your uh, uh, to the Quality Council of India. Um, now, the main question, uh, uh, one of the most important question is, how do we go about it? So for a health, if you are a health facility, uh, you just have to register on the health facility registry. Um, uh, we all know that when you go and register on health uh, 
uh, facility, you would see a screen where we are adding another uh, button uh, called as uh, register for digital health incentive scheme. Uh, you would just be required to enter your uh, uh, bank account details and uh, submit some documents. And uh, this is for that so that your payments are enabled. Uh, we would also require if you if you are on the health facility registry and you are not using an AVDM enabled software, you can. Uh, we would request you to go to uh, our website. You can see all the AVDM enabled software. They are about uh, 50 or 60 in number, and you can choose uh, whichever software that you want to use. And then, uh, and then uh, once you do that, you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can be eligible for our incentives uh, for receiving the incentives you make transactions you go live and then uh, you come on our website you say claim uh, your incentives that uh, your incentives would be auto calculated put on uh, put on your uh, put on your logins and then you can click claim now and when you click claim now your incentives would be transferred to your bank account we want to make it uh, simple these pages are under development uh, uh, it would be uh, launched very shortly. As and when they are launched, we would announce it on our website. We request you to please uh, stay tuned to our website, and uh, we will uh, we are getting it up as early as possible. For a company, if you are a health tech company and you want to uh, uh, you want to utilize this scheme, you just have to register on EBDM Sandbox. You have to undergo your integration process for the facilities who have registered who have done M1 integration. You should do M2 and M3. So it will be a good time. This is December. You, you uh, want to get integrated. We are there to support. And then uh, similar to the process for a health facility registry, you integrate and then you go live and you also put in your bank account details by registering for digital health incentive scheme. Uh, these are some of the examples that uh, we want to uh, that uh, we want to tell as to how much incentives would a typically a ten credit um, hospital get. We have also put it on our website, uh, it's also put up in the scheme document, but just to reiterate, suppose you have a 10 bedded hospital and you have about 100 to 150 uh, patients uh, visiting every day, means about you are seeing, and if you make one health record for them, means about uh, 3,000 transactions in a month. And since the base level for a 10 bedded hospital would be 10 into 50, you will have about 2,500 uh, eligible transactions because the base level is 500. So uh, for 2,500 into 20, uh, a health facility would uh, get about uh, close to about 50,000 rupees a month, um, which I think and software is available at uh, at uh, rates such as 300 to 500 rupees uh, uh, per month. Uh, in, uh, EVDM enabled software are available. Uh, data migration is possible. Some software have offered free, uh, are being offered free. So all this information that is available on our website. So if you are a health facility, you want to take this incentive, you really want to, uh, really, it, it is, it, it, it would be a good, um, it would be a, a good uh, decision for you. And we had also mentioned that suppose you use uh, a company X's uh, uh, software, if you get 50,000 rupees, 25% of that incentive would go to the, uh, software company that is the digital solution company. So 50,000 plus 12,500 is the total incentive. Similarly, for that, if you do about uh, 800, 100, 50 or 100 patients and do 100 patient uh, reports uh, a day, uh, you will be doing 3,000 uh, patient reports uh, in a month and eligible. Uh, uh, Eligible uh, transactions would be 2500 because we have defined uh, the base level as 500 for all laboratory facilities. So, up, uh, you uh, at the rate of 15 rupees, you will be eligible for 37,500. And if you see our website, the link software is available as cheap as 300 rupees a month. So, it will again be a very, very good proposition. The digital solution company, which provides you uh, the solution in 300 rupees a month, would get about 975 rupees for every uh, uh, for every lab that they get. So uh, digital uh, solution companies get 25% uh, of uh, the incentives that are for uh, a hospital with 10 beds for a laboratory. Over and above, if, uh, if there are any 
small clinic where they do uh, where they do uh, uh, 200 or more transactions, they'll be eligible for rupees five per uh, transaction. And uh, uh, how much is the total amount that uh, uh, that any facility or PSC can get? Uh, it is four crore rupees, uh, uh, which is huge. And uh, uh, and we and we are and we are mentioning our policy that we are open to like increasing the cap, increasing the cap, and uh, uh, and we are, we are we will make the changes as per your suggestion, if your comments, and what is the uptake by the ecosystem. Uh, we are uh, we, we we are setting up a public dashboard where all these transactions would be visible. And you can you will be able to see how many transactions you have done, how many transactions you have to do more in a month. So to get a real time picture, uh, uh, this is uh, this this could be available shortly. Uh, presently, we are not uh, uh, considering transactions done by virtual facilities, but definitely uh, in the future we'll think about that. Um, we have uh, the initial financial outlay for the scheme is fifty crore rupees, and uh, if, uh, we put the uh, um, we, it is on our radar that we want to increase this uh, incentive amount, and uh, we will take appropriate approvals uh, once the scheme is successful. Uh, we find that there is an uptake by the ecosystem for financial year 2022-23. That is January, February, March. Uh, we, we have left. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, earmarked 25 crores, and suppose uh, uh, for the next few. Uh, quarter we have uh, earmarked uh, uh, whatever that uh, balance is there. But uh, believe me, this is this is just the initial policy. Based on that, uh, we will uh, we will surely revise uh, those uh, revise those limits. Um, uh, just uh, reiterating and uh, summing up the presentation. Uh, please watch uh, our website for regular updates. We'll Keep updating this website. We keep updating every now and then if there is any update. And we'll be doing more webinars, more IC activities. Uh, we, 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 will, we are finalizing the registration phase. We will shortly inform you when the registration phase is up. And uh, you will be able to uh, register uh, um, for the scheme. We are also setting up an incentive calculator so that we'll be able to easily calculate. Uh, how many how many transactions you have done so far, and if you do this many transactions, how many rupees you will be able to uh, get? Uh, we have told that the policy would be applicable month on a monthly basis. So if you do for and it, it starts from first January, so first January thirty first January, we will we are hopeful that we will be able to uh, disburse the incentives in the first week of February. Um, if there are any uh, if there are any uh, feedback, please uh, send us on this mail. Uh, we also know that this uh, relates to money. Uh, there may be, there would surely be many grievances. We have a grievance portal uh, on our website, if we, and we would allow you to track, and we assure you that we will um, speedily resolve all the uh, all the grievances that are there. If we are endeavor that these grievances are not there in the first place, but if there are any, we would be there to solve them. So we really require your support to uh, make this scheme successful. Uh, we will open this uh, for questions uh, now. And, um, and uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to our presentation. Uh, we would uh, go over the questions. Uh, you want to uh, uh, you want to take them one by one? Can you tell us uh, what the questions are, and then we will. Uh, so, so Dr. Naresh uh, has raised his hand. Uh, uh, I have unmuted you, sir. Please ask your query. Uh, good afternoon, both to sir. This is a high privilege for me to be able to talk at such a high level. I am audible, sir. Yes, you are audible. Okay, sir. I am Sir Dr. Naresh Agarwal, private consultant. Sir, actually, when I go through the page, the PDF we post on and that uh, ABDM website, we had mentioned the HCX. But in presentation, HCX is missing. Can I ask a question related to HCX incentives? Yes, you can ask. And just to uh, just to tell you again, the 
have launched that cx it is shortly and that is the now we will uh, just going to cross the 3 month launched 3 month launch by our honorable uh, health minister union health minister yeah so we'll the be 25th. launching this we will we will we have we are using hcx for pmjy presently we are uh, fine tuning it uh, we are uh, making the apis available in public domain and also making it this uh, platform available to the ecosystem and that was one of the main reason to promote uh, hcx to uh, make uh, the insurance transactions easy we had put this in the incentive policy we will uh, update you uh, very very uh, as soon as we get to know that this uh, this uh, platform and hcx has been finalized actually sir main, uh... main intention was uh, to put uh, this hcx was only because we also want we are also very excited about hcx and as soon as it is launched uh, for all private uh, hospitals and um, in the uh, for hospitals apart from pmjy we will uh, inform it inform you on our website sir can you give me the deadline or some expected date of launching because it is practically launched 3 months back by our union health minister and on the presentation there was clearly mentioned that it is launched and now every pmj claim will be put on hcx yeah. but unfortunately as for my knowledge there is not a single uh, pmj claim has been put on hcx so far and as far as the bite from our respected ceo sir they say that uh, we are first going to start in haryana uh, state uh, HCX. Kindly please update on this point if it is possible. Yeah, we'll put uh, the updates on our website for that. So, so we will put updates on our website uh, and uh, now, yeah. yeah. When do we go next? So, next is uh, Harsh Parekh. Uh, I'm unmuting you. You may ask your question. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Harsh here from Briefcase. Yeah. Uh, so, hi. So my question was regarding transactions by health lockers. Uh, I fully understand that for health facilities, there is a minimum level, a minimum transaction level uh, per facility. And uh, for other players, digital solution companies, the, tran the, the transaction level is 200 per month. So uh, I just wanted to understand that in greater detail that, that the 200 limit is 200 per facility that may be, we may be associated with, or if, as a health locker, which, which brief case is, if we have 50 that are associated with hospital X and another 100 by a third hospital and another 70 and another hospital crossing, reaching to 220, then we are eligible for uh, the incentive for 20, which are in excess of the 200. Yeah. Thanks, sir, for this question. It's an important one. Uh, but the basic intention uh, for the 200 limit was that those facilities who do not have 10 beds or more, uh, for them, the 200 limit was set. But uh, health lockers, as you know, was also mentioned in the scheme document. And if I read that, to avail these benefits, each such clinic slash small hospital slash health locker slash teleconsultation facility would need would need to do more than 200 transactions per month. And we had mainly considered um, small facilities and clinics for that. For uh, health lockers, we will put, we will put it up on our website uh, in the FAQ section and in the operational guidelines, uh, uh, and we will provide more clarity on that. That that would be great. Thank you. Thanks. So next, uh, I'm unmuting Abhishek Shri Vastav. Uh, may please ask a question. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. This is Abhishek from LabSmart. Uh, we provide uh, online SaaS solution to pathology labs in India. Uh, my question is, uh, I see the incentive scheme is very good, but uh, is there something being done for fraud prevention in this? Uh, because, uh, yeah, for the uh, digital solution provider and for the lab, it's a good thing. They can keep entering and keep creating medical records and keep making money, but uh, uh, but but there is a chance that uh, this thing can get abused. So that's my question. Yeah, we we we, we uh, when we prepared this scheme, uh, got got finalizing this scheme. This question was always in the back of our mind that uh, how do we 
take into account. So if you read the policy document carefully, it is also mentioned that um, uh, we will be monitoring those uh, uh, transactions uh, on a uh, on a regular basis, and we will uh, we we have a team in place who would monitor such and such monitor those transactions and see if uh, there is any abuse. And in a country like India, we all know that uh, when we bring about these schemes, particularly money, they are uh, going to. But having said that, uh, since you have asked the question, if you have time, can you also uh, tell us in the chat box uh, uh, after thinking for some time what are the potential areas where abuse can happen? But uh, we are also thinking loudly about that. Yeah. So next, uh, we are going to Faisal uh, Valapkil. Uh, could you please ask Faisal? Yeah, uh, my name is Faisal, basically from uh, Kerala, but I'm here in working Qatar. I did not uh, hear about the, all the matters, but I want to ask you the national, this, uh, I was suggested this was IDF for this one. So I don't know what, I did not listen to the previous things, what you say, but I want to show the all the citizens, they need, should get the registration, this one. And what is, uh, we need to, we can register in the, their PHC and the village level PHC or what is the options. And another thing, what about the what about the national health mission uh, NHA? What is offering for the SMA thalassemia kidney transplantation? The students, even the students, they cannot afford the money, and government cannot support. What is the support for them? And what about their long-term illness ch children for this national health mission? And the registration for the as I told you, we have any of the doctors and the hospital, the private and include everything registered under the NHA and. Uh, uh, the things I want. Yeah. Faisal, uh, you, we would want you to go to our website and see complete information that is available just to reiterate uh, this, this incentive scheme is for both uh, the public facilities as well as for private facilities for all PHCs uh, they can do but it is mainly restricted to Aishman Bharat Digital Mission and uh, ABDM integrated and ABDM enabled uh, uh, facilities. So uh, I thought that the questions that you were asking were very basic and our uh, website uh, does uh, clarify all of them. So we can move to the next one. Yes, uh, so uh, Arvindan, could you please ask your question? Yeah, uh, good afternoon everyone, uh, thanks for the time. My name is Aravindan. I'm calling, I'm from uh, IOSTO Software. Uh, we are a digital solution company. We provide HIA solutions. I have two questions. I want you to uh, explain what do you mean by transaction uh, in detail? That's the first question. The second question is the 20% uh, the extra incentive for the D, uh, DSEs. Uh, I would like to under get an understanding better on that part as well. So these are the two questions from my side. Uh, so, uh, for example, in transaction, if, if the same patient comes for the uh, for another treatment during the period for the same health facility, whether that is also called, counted as a transaction uh, from a uh, ABHA uh, standpoint. So, I want to understand that point better. Yeah, so that that's an important question, and uh, to be uh, uh, to be uh, to be uh, uh, clear and frank about it, presently we, we are allowing all such cases. If a patient comes back to you in say five to ten days, or maybe in, on the same day, uh, if the health record is linked uh, with ABHA and it comes on our HIECM, uh, um, it is it would be considered as a valid transaction. So, so I mean we have kept it fairly broad as of now. So, uh, uh, if Alam, uh, if you could please ask your question. So I think I'm moving to next. Uh, uh, so it's Leh from Leh first hello, floor. Hello, hello. I'm Irshad Alam. Hi, Irshad. Yes, yes. Good, good afternoon, everybody. I am from My Clinic Health, and uh, the my question is that like we are offering uh, healthcare solution through our uh, application, mobile applications. And there are so many uh, user base and they are using our uh, application for the telemedicine and all. Okay. The uh, AVA number, uh, if you talk about the AVA number, if 
patient is not resting on our number, but they are using my application uh, for the teleconsultation. So on that case, uh, we can show our transactions to ABDHM or not? No. Okay, okay. The, uh, the creation of our number is important, no? Yeah, you have to get your system integrated with us. Go on our sandbox and uh, one of you can uh, uh, put, the, uh, put the link of the sandbox on. on yeah, our, uh, our company already integration work has done and I, uh, we have been satisfied. My only advice would be that you get uh, integrated with the EBDM as early as possible and then only okay. be eligible. Okay, thank you very much. I'm uh, moving to next, uh, next uh, Shiv Kumar Jangam. Uh, if you can ask a question. Uh, hi, I'm Shiv Kumar. I'm from Sanohub Technologies. Uh, we are a mobile health technology company and provide solutions for home health companies and uh, old age homes where uh, health is a priority for the old age and the geriatric patients. Uh, my question was, uh, this incentives is only for the hospitals and diagnostic centers or also the healthcare providers like home health companies uh, where uh, health records is a main thing uh, where they have to update the next of kin of the patients. Uh, so that was my question. So, so presently, uh, uh, thanks for the question. And presently uh, in our team, we have uh, not allowed for virtual facilities. So uh, if you see the scheme, uh, document you will be written that it is written that transactions done by virtual facilities created in the health facility registry will not be considered for calculation of incentives under the scheme. So presently we are not doing that, but but please hold on for some more time. Uh, would request you to uh, give us uh, a separate uh, email or uh, uh, or your view as to why we should also have uh, a virtual facility and and we'll surely consider that. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Like you do. Hello. Hi, this is Team uh, Innovator. We are a health tech company based out of uh, New Delhi and San Francisco. So we have been working uh, uh, with multiple governments globally on similar initiatives. So we have a very specific question that while we understand that this is, uh, you know, the phase one of uh, implementing this scheme, our assumption is that by the time uh, uh, we are at the fag end of next year, probably there would be some developments on the fronts of preventive care enablement or special incentivization for uh, enabling, uh, uh, you know, value driven care or enabling uh, a preventive care loop for that matter. So uh, do you foresee expanding this scheme to that in the next year or maybe in the next 18 months or uh, uh, should we assume that uh, the incentivization model that we have might be increased in terms of uh, uh, the money associated and uh, uh, the focus would remain on the digitalization part as it is now. Well, so we at NHA when we is implementing the EBDM, the focus is going to be on, uh, on the digital part. Uh, just to clarify again, uh, NHA does not know if it is a preventive health record or if it is a secondary health record. So, so we do not see, we are not able to see what health record is. If you are a software provider company and you provide health record to the patient, irrespective of if it is being in the primary health care or the secondary or the surgery, uh, for us, uh, it is, we are agnostic to such transactions. And, and, and in the future, we'll be able to do, uh, I think only time will tell, but uh, we are limited to digital transactions as of now. And if they are in the primary sector or in the preventive sector, as you mentioned, we are, we, we are open to it uh, even now. So due to time constraint, we will take another two to three questions and then we will keep you update about this game. So next would be Dr. Kronal. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I saw this is Dr. Kunal. So we uh, we are from Health Details. And my question is that our platform is, is related to converting the whole data into electronic health record and digital files, but it doesn't provide any kind of teleconsultation or that kind of services. So uh, generating that kind of EHR on our platform, will it be considered as a transaction or it won't? 
Thank you. So, as I mentioned, the virtual facilities would not be considered a transaction. You would have to have your system on at least 10 health facilities, 10 physical health facilities as of now. Uh, there are questions also on like teleconsultation on health lockers, but we'll clarify that. But if you are solely a teleconsultation provider, uh, as of now in the first initial document, to me, you do not seem uh, eligible. But in the meanwhile, I, I just request you that if you can sign in on our uh, sandbox and you become a BDM integrated uh, as soon as the second or the third phase of the incentive scheme is launched, you might be eligible for that. Dr. Murthy, uh, could you please ask your question? Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Murthy. We are a health tech company from Bangalore um, called Vaximum. We are into uh, vaccination services. So I, I was just wondering, we, um, you know, um, when it comes to vaccination records, and uh, you know, we have the facility of storing the vaccination records. And uh, would we would we be eligible for this since we have um, a regular, uh, you know, flow of patients coming in? So can you tell us uh, more about uh, what your model is? I mean, your patients come uh, physically to you? No, no, they don't come physically to us. Uh, no, we, we, in our uh, accredited centers, they come physically. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there, there is a doorstep vaccination service also. So wherein uh, we, we procure the documents related to patients and uh, other things uh, virtually. So would, you, would we be eligible for this? Um, I mean, sandbox integration and uh, uh, I mean, uh, for the incentive scheme. You are eligible for the sandbox integration scheme. Uh, so you, uh, uh, you, uh, you can sign on our sandbox. As I mentioned initially also, we are agnostic to uh, health record. We don't see whether that record is, uh, that record is, uh, that record is uh, vaccination record or any other record. But if you could uh, see the scheme document, if your solution is installed in ten or more facilities and you do 200 transactions per facility, you are eligible. So if you see those, then uh, tend to get, uh, if, you are, if you think you are eligible, I think uh, you can register on our portal and uh, we will evaluate the, uh, the eligibility. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, hi, Darshit, could you please ask your question? Yeah, uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, see, basically, we are building a uh, user side application where we don't have any healthcare providers on our platform. Uh, however, we would we, we are in process of being ABDM compliant and we have applied for M1 certificate already in, uh, to be, to, as an exit process from Sandbox. Now, the important question here is in this entire framework, uh, we do not have the clarity. Let's say where is my user already has an ABA ID, which is mandatory on my platform uh, to create the ABA ID. He'll create the ABA ID and upload their documentations. That would necessarily be uh, old uh, uh, health records. Plus, uh, I'm 100% sure that they, uh, by the time this scheme, uh, as in the current timeline uh, in which this scheme has been uh, uh, announced, uh, like six months down the line, There'll be uh, not many doctors and local clinics and all who will be there on ABDM platform. So uh, the current prescriptions, current health records, current lab test, etc., etc., will be generated and uploaded by the user. So if that is the case, are we eligible? And if not, how soon do you think? Because we'll play a very important role to create uh, the kind uh, old old data is something that we'll be the one who will provide you. So how can you accommodate us? Is my question. Not about accommodating uh, uh, the scheme uh, is in black and white. There might be some clarifications which are required, which might be required, but uh, since it has, has been launched, uh, if, uh, if you are not eligible in the, in, in the, as per the scheme document, we'll have to think about it in the next phase. Having said that, you might also be eligible in the first phase. Only uh, my only uh, reiteration about uh, your eligibility is that. You should get into MC integrated on um, That is what the scheme says. Uh, uh, also, um, 
old records and uh, legacy records and uh, the new records so the scheme is presently silent about it so you can uh, you can maybe uh, if you do not uh, if you do not uh, uh, bring out a guideline with solid tools you can find you can and we have not till now you uh, i think you are eligible for the legacy record also having said that if somebody al already has an aha so uh, and you just link their record to uh, yeah, his, uh, her aha id you are eligible that would be counted as transaction making an aha is not a transaction making an aha link record is a transaction it is irrespective of the fact that whether that person has an aha or not there are 32 individuals who already have an aha as of now if they go to the hospital and uh, your hospital generates or your system generates an aha link record for them uh, be it old or a new one um, i think uh, you are there so next is swarni indu chaudhary could you please ask your question Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Swarnendu. I'm calling from IHX. Just wanted to check with you. Uh, uh, health repository providers, which enable HIS or LIS to be ABDM compliant, uh, if hospitals submit documents through that uh, and link the health records with the ABDM ecosystem, would they be considered as part of as a DSC in the incentive plan? The DSC also has to be there, right? Hospital should be using an HMIS if the ABDM is involved. And if that is there, then they are eligible. Okay. And you, you are, and of course, they will all, I mean, even health lockers, teleconsultation, everyone has to be M1, M2, M3, all uh, all stages of certification has to be done, right? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, understood. And I did not understand clearly the last answer you gave. So basically, uh, standalone health lockers, which is only patient facing, those DSCs are uh, right now not eligible for the incentive plan. Yeah, right uh, now it doesn't seem that they are eligible because we have put a criteria of at least uh, being operational in any facilities or more. But we'll, uh, we have noted that question and we'll provide more guidance on that shortly. Right okay. now we don't seem eligible to move. And uh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Bankatesha, could you please ask your question? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so I have a question about uh, the DSC uh, one. So when you are saying that twenty five percent of corresponding incentive will be received, like for any hospital or anything. So uh, is the uh, my question is like twenty five percent of the allocated money to the hospital, or that twenty five percent will be different from that? Over and above. So hundred oh, rupees okay. to the hospital, twenty five rupees to you. So it is not twenty five rupees from NHA. And it goes to the hospital, 25 goes to you. And I also have a question about virtual facilities. So when we are doing like telemedicine or a virtual call for a clinic or let's say for a, a hospital or a doctor, will that be considered as a virtual facility or no? The teleconsultation to us could be a virtual facility. So yeah, right now in the scheme document, we have provided that transactions done by virtual facility created in the HFR will not be considered for cancellation of incentives and So till now, I don't know if you don't have a solution in a physical health facility, uh, to us, you don't seem eligible. Okay. So moving to next, uh, Naveen, could you please ask your query? Uh, Naveen? Yeah, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, my question is uh, the incentive part and everything is good. But the only thing my question is uh, how you are going to promote this to the uh, normal hospitals, like in, uh, on like uh, each and every states and UTs, how they are going to know and each and every hospital, like uh, this uh, incentive program. I mean, like uh, the hospitals which are currently in, uh, I'm from Telangana here. Uh, mostly some hospitals not even know about this incentive program. How are you going to promote this? We are trying to uh, hold webinars. We have uh, sent out a press conference yesterday. We are going to do more, uh, more collaborations with individual states. We had a meeting with the state mission directors of uh, Avishman Bharat yesterday and the health ministry of 
all the states. We are in touch with them. Uh, we will put up more holdings, more uh, more IT material, uh, more videos, more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for us to uh, to be visible to those facilities and uh, you would also require your support. We need to uh, we have set up everything on our website to just and first disseminate that uh, to these facilities. Uh, be helpful. But yes, we 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 know that this is a challenge. To be very honest. That uh, whatever work that is being done to the facilities, know about it. It is not only about this government team, all government team. So we are trying to do uh, what is possible, but yes, um, we have to make efforts on that. So next, uh, Harini, uh, could you please ask your question? Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, so. I'm Harini from uh, Karma Primary Healthcare. So we basically have nurse assisted uh, clinics in rural areas, and uh, we also have a panel of doctors. So the teleconsultation happens at the clinic through these doctors. So are we eligible for this incentive program? Yes, you are eligible. Yeah. Sorry? You are eligible at the clinic if you install your system and the doctor yes. provides teleconsultation. The, no doubt about it. The clinic would have to be registered in the HFR. We uh, registered those clinics in the uh, HFR, and uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll ask anybody from our team to put the uh, put the URL of our health facility registry. But then go on our website and you can register those. Sure, so, so the registration is already available. Yes, registration on is already is available. So far, one lakh seventy one thousand. Uh, uh, health facilities have already registered. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yeah, and you be on our website if there is any issue, we'll support you. So next would be uh, Ram Das, if you can ask your question. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My question is very similar to what just Harini asked. So we have we operate some 16 clinics in Odisha where we have a nurse assisting for patients to do teleconsultation. From what you just answered, I believe you are eligible for the incentive, right? You are eligible except the part that your software has to be integrated with ABDM. Just make sure so that is right. software that we use is integrated to M1 and to M3. Yeah, so we are actually we are developed our own platform. We are in the process of degrading that with ABDM, which we will be doing. Uh, next question is: We have sixteen clinics, or each of these had to be registered separately, I believe. That's right. Okay, and the next question is: When we have a patient coming in, they may have multiple transactions, so they may do a video consultation, they may do a glucose test in the clinic, and they may do a ECG for that matter. So, will that be considered as three different transactions or only one transaction? Uh, that's an important question for us also. Uh, there was a question in terms of abuse, fraud. So right now we have uh, we have uh, defined that any abhali record. So if it is an ECG, which is abhali, if it is a lab record, which is abhali, uh, could be uh, separate transactions. But there is also a concept called uh, care continuum. So if you are going to hospital, share all those records as one uh, one record, then we will consider them as one record. For example, if you, uh, if at the end of the day, I come to your hospital and you say, uh, become this is your, uh, this is your uh, prescription, this is your ECG, this is your lab, then at, at this, all these three would be taken as one record. Oh, that we all put together, there'll be one record, not three of them, right? Okay, and another question which I have is, so what, one of the things which we do here is we collect the samples and send it to our partner labs in the capital, in the state capital. So when we do this, will we be eligible for incentive on that even if the other partner lab is eligible for it? Yeah, I mean, uh, there is a partner, uh, you would be providing uh, the laboratory report, right? For example, they don't know whether it has been provided by to the by the facility which uh, you have provided your sample to, so either the either that company would be eligible or you will be eligible. 
so the on the name of the report uh, whoever is the is the dsc they would get uh, the report for example in your laboratory if the limbs is uh, limbs is take uh, cranio health and cranio health lab provides and that laboratory report to somebody else for the report and then you provide to the customer it would be cranio health which gets the uh, get the which gets the incentive okay so essentially you're saying only the tests which we implement we do in house will be eligible for incentive the other ones the partner level we getting instead we will not be getting incentive so if you provide that if, if the final report is given by you then you will be eligible if the final report is given by that lab then or to the customer yeah, the performance is you or to or that facility that is a matter so what we do is we get the report from one of the partners let's say take on quest for example and we upload into our platform from where we take a print out and give it to the patient and the name on that print out will be the partner lab not our name yeah uh, on the first one it uh, i think that uh, i think that uh, we should not be eligible but uh, we have noted this down and we clarify uh, more about it i'm sorry could i couldn't receive what you were saying you have noted your question and we we'll provide clarification from this round that uh, uh, that's that's fine that's fine it should not be eligible but we we'll clarify on that so we are taking the last question from anushka hello hi uh, am i audible yes yes you are audible hi uh thanks a lot for allowing me to speak uh so uh mr pagaria just mentioned uh some things uh you know in response to another question that was posed on uh, the number of transactions that are considered and uh, you know records and how they are counted uh could you um could you could you um you know repeat that again i um yeah. confirm that I just trying to say that suppose I visit a hospital and at the end of my visit I am given say uh, a prescription, a ECG report, an X-ray report, and all of them are provided by the hospital to me. So when I link the record uh, with me, those records would be considered as a single transaction. That is what I want to say. If if you do it separately. then they would be separate records but to us what we uh, use the word clear continuum is that when we go to the hospital we get all the things uh, and then we come back so this is one visit and we consider them as one record also uh, thanks to all uh, for asking your queries Uh, so we will uh, definitely organize these kind of webinars in the coming more and there will be more webinars like this which give a overview of this implementation scheme and uh, about the next steps about the schemes and uh, you can also watch our page uh, on our evdm website uh, so you can watch uh, dhis page to know about more about the eligibility and when it will be officially uh, uh, officially launched we will also implementing one dashboard so all updates will be there and uh, you can view all those updates on uh, our abdm portal abdm website uh, so i would also like to thank all of you for uh, attending this webinar and to ask a few questions to give suggestions uh, and for sharing uh, your thought and ideas plus we will also have one email id which is incentive. Uh, abdm. abdm. incentive at the rate nhc.gov.in so you can post your queries uh, in this regard you can post your uh, submissions your thoughts your ideas on that and we will definitely revert you within a, a tat of one or two days uh, so thanks to all of you for uh, attending this session thank you thank you
you can add.